day all. So we are going through the lineage of Christ and looking at the five women that are mentioned in Matthew 1 in that, in that genealogy. Today we're looking at Rahab. Rahab's story is in Joshua 2 and she was known as the harlot, the prostitute Rahab. She lives in Jericho and when the Israelite spies come to, to look around the city, the city that God has given them, their inheritance, she hides them um, and then lets them escape and, and takes a step of faith in doing that and says to them, when you take the city, please keep me and my family safe. And there's so many incredible things that we can learn from her story and I just want to highlight a few points. The first being her position in life didn't disqualify God from using her. She was a prostitute um, and if any, if any position gives means for disqualification, one would think it would be prostitution. But no, God still uses her. She took a bold step of faith, so much so that she's mentioned again in Hebrews 31. Um, like the, the wall of fame of, of people who have had great faith for God. And it says here, it was by faith that Rahab the prostitute was not destroyed with the people in her city who refused to obey God, for she had given a friendly welcome to the spies. The next point that I want to highlight is just the fact that she didn't allow her position or her sin to discourage her from taking the step of faith. She no one is disqualified from a sonship or a daughtership in God's kingdom. We are all welcomed into the kingdom of God. No one is disqualified from that. And when she chose to take a step of faith, she took a step of faith trusting that, that she would be accepted. She hid the spies knowing that she wanted the same inheritance that they had. She wanted to be a part of their people. Um, and when she hid them, she did that before she had guarantee that, that they would spare her and her family's life. But she took a bold step of faith and it was greatly rewarded. Sometimes before we take a step of faith, we can disqualify ourselves. No, I'm not significant enough. Why would God choose to use me? Or I'm not beautiful enough or I'm not clever enough. Why would God use me? But she didn't allow the fact that the position that she held was, was one of shame to disqualify her from being used by God. She could have said, would they even want to be hidden by me? Um, would God ever want me to be a part of his people? But she took that step of faith and it highlights the next points. She recognized God. She recognized the power of God and she speaks about it in, in Joshua 2 and she just says, we know what your God has done. We know that he's going to take the city. People tremble and are afraid of him. She recognized the power of God. And she was discontent. I'm going to take a leap here and look at the story and I'm going to say she was discontent with a life of sin. She wanted, she hid the spies wanting another life, wanting something different because there was a discontentedness with where she found herself in life. She asked them to spare her life and the life of her family, knowing that then she would be part of the Israelites' people um, and it would be a new life for her. And I suppose that's a challenge to us as well. Do we recognize God and are we willing to throw away our sin and choose the more that God has for us because we know that life with him is abundance and it's more than than the sin that sometimes we become content with. The last little thing I want to leave us with is that God saw her faith not her sin and let that be an encouragement to us. Don't disqualify yourself because of the sin in your heart, but know that God chooses to see our faith, not our sin. Mm -hmm.